What's going on, everybody? Hopefully you're having a good day out there. I had to restart my video. I noticed I misspelled a word uh, in my running header up there, and I was like, wow, that's pretty bad. Let me restart here. So hopefully everybody's having a pretty good day out there. Um, we're going to continue on with the videos that I've been uh, starting to do now. They're more opinion-based, plus to see what everybody else is seeing, to get people talking, to look into the comments and stuff, to see... Hey, is what I'm seeing what everybody else is seeing? You know, I live in one part of the world. Somebody else lives on West Coast, Midwest, Northeast, Southeast, wherever it may be out there. And it's always good to see that because you see different people's thoughts, their opinions, uh, whatever they're seeing as trends out there. So we're going to move on with this. And we're going to continue with the great card market crash of 2022. Um, that's what I'm calling it, at least for right now, because... <laughs> Hey, we now are not a hobby anymore. We're a market. I, I just think that's funny. So that's just me goofing around with the, the title of this stuff, just so everybody knows. And then also we're going to talk about, is this a recession or not? Now that's going to be one of the harder questions really to look at here. Um, everybody's going to have different thoughts and opinion on it. My opinion is I think we're in the very, very early stages of a recession that could still go either way, but we'll see how it pans out long run. With That's the whole economy as a whole. And when you look at the economy as a whole, well, that will affect the sports card hobby. Will it affect other different markets out there and stuff like that there? Um, I'll probably be using a lot of the slang terms, market, influencers, content creators, stuff like that onto here. Uh, I know... They're kind of like bad words and stuff out there, but that's what everybody's been going with. So we'll use those for a time being. I'll try to find some classier catchphrases or whatever you want to call for that stuff when we get there. All right, well, let's hit the first topic of it all. Let me pull this up wherever it went to here. Recession. Straight out of the dictionary, a period of temporary economic decline during which trade and industrial activity are reduced, generally identified by a fall in GDP in two successive quarters. We were pretty much two quarters right now into the year because we're in June, so we're getting ready to close one out. Depending on how everybody runs their quarters, some people go January through December, some people started October through September, so always... Kind of catchy when you look at that stuff, but still, quarter's a quarter on to it. And if we scroll down here, I'm going to pull Forbes up. And this just hits some more stuff on to the significant decline of economic activity lasts for months or even years. Experts declare a recession when the nation's economy experiences negative gross domestic product, which is your GDP, rising levels of unemployment, falling retail sales, and contracting measures of income and manufacturing for extended period of time. Yada, 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 yada. Okay. We're not doing, I guess you could say, a history class or business class here or whatever it could be. But just wanted to get that out there just in case, you know, there's a lot of presumptions of what a recession is and stuff. I mean, you could Google it and find it all out. So we're just going to leave it at that. I mean, we do fall into some of these categories across the board, though. And depending on what you look at for the aspect, I still think we're in the very beginning stages of it. Can we dig ourselves out? Possibly. Do I think it's going to trend further down? I do, but those are my thoughts and opinions. And like I said, I always like to see what everybody else is thinking out there as well. Um, no idea. If we do hit a recession, how long will it last? What do you guys think? Would it be a few months, a year? Are we going to look at like the 2000, was it 7, 8, even through a little bit of 9 when things started coming back up? I think it was midway through 9, you know, offhand. I can look at different things like the value of my home has gone nothing but up, and even during the last few months, it's still gaining value. So if the housing market's doing good, and even though it has not fallen down from what they say that, you know, I get that little thing every quarter, um, your home values this, do you want this kind of money, do you want to 
refinance and take a loan out or whatever it is, that equity crap. I don't do it. I just throw it all away. But I look at stuff like that there versus some of the other things out there. Crypto, stocks, uh, sports cards, you know, gas, inflation, all that stuff. One thing I happen to look at today, um, everybody knows I work for the government. I'm retired through the military, still have a government job and everything. I happen to have to re-go into what we have is called a thrift savings plan, which is either you can choose a traditional or Roth IRA. And because they redid their website, I had to go back in and redo the passwords and that uh, we call it two or three step verification, pin codes to your phone, email, and answer these six questions. And you're trying to remember who in the heck was my third grade freaking English teacher. <laughs> I can't remember that. I mean, seriously. <laughs> I might as well just put down like my dog's name for it because I, I really don't remember. But anyhow, going into this, I, I was looking at it and I'm like, whoa, it says since the beginning of the year, my RA dropped 6.8%. Did a little math and I was like, whoa, that's like over two months of my salary for the year. That's a good chunk of money, you know. I was like kind of shocked by it. So I started looking at different things. And I know this is a sports card channel. And we're going to reference this stuff to sports cards. Because some people say that if there's a recession, everything's going to go down. And I think if we look at card prices right now, even though we're going to ton back from the grading companies and we exclude out all the 10,000 variations of the unicorn out there along with the huge population counts of base PSA 10s. And even if we get down to the nitty gritty on, you know, low serial number cards, vintage cards across the board, you're going to see some declines out there. Um, now, the big thing is those declines where they're at now, if we go back pre-COVID over two years, are those prices still higher than beforehand? Yeah, from what I've seen, pretty much, I'd probably say about 80 to 85% are still above that. Depending on the card, I'm talking about like, oh, 89 Upper Deck Griffey Rookies to 86 Tops Clemens Rookie PSA 10s to Ripken Tops Traded Rookies to Mike Schmidt Rookies. I'm just throwing names out there. I don't want to use Mickey Mantle and Clemente and Aaron because a lot of those we all know are just going to go up over time. But stuff like that there to Larry Bird, Matty Johnson rookie card to Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux. Uh, football wise, Marino, Elway, Montana. I mean, we can go further and further. Barry Sanders, any of that stuff. Jerry Rice. I mean, I'm just trying to use names that what probably most of us seen play. If I start going to hit like OJ Simpson and stuff like that, I know probably a good chunk of us haven't seen him play. We know who they are. Um, we know it's a good thing, you know, for vintage, one of the names you want to go after, Staubach, etc., stuff like that. But uh, just looking at it, you know, some of that stuff is held, you know, from what it was two years ago. But you'd expect that. Anything over two years, you know, most of us got salary increases during that time frame. The price of milk went up, everything else. So you figure you're... Uh, sports card from back then would have gone up a little bit too. All right, let me switch some screens around here. So I, I know I was hitting this, but I wanted to look at other things around here because a lot of things that's being thrown out is that, oh, the card shows aren't doing well because of gas prices. All right, boom. Triple A gas prices. National average $5.01. That's about where I'm at up here. And what really is surprising, I was just looking at this chart. You look at this area here. So you're looking, look at this, Alabama, Mississippi, 460, 450 something, 449, 460. I'm like, wow. Go over here to California, 643. 554, Oregon. Let's look at New York, $5. Pennsylvania, $5.06. Wow, Pennsylvania, more than New York. That's kind of crazy. Uh, just by looking at stuff like that across the board, everybody's filling it, you know, because their gas prices have gone up. And just by looking at it over time, you know, it's going up in price. Some people are saying, oh, it's because of the uh, Russia-Ukraine war. We're sending oil over to this place and everything else, so our prices are going up. 
it can be various reasons out there. I think there's a lot. There's just not one or two contributing factors to it. I think there's a bunch to it. Because if you notice, every year, right around Memorial Day, gas prices go up for the summer. And then you'll start seeing them slowly drift down after 4th of July, and then they'll boom back up real quick for Labor Day, and then they drop back down for a while. So I, I don't know. I just noticed that as a trend ever, oh gosh, probably for 10, 15 years now. I don't know if you guys have seen that too and noticed it, but hey, let me know in the comments as always. So I, I started here because I know everybody's been talking about it. Roughly, our gas went up about a dollar, let me think here, dollar twenty a gallon. I mean, that's expensive. I got it. If you're driving, you know, an extra 10 gallons of gas to go to and from a card show, you know, okay, now I'm up to what, 12 bucks extra in money I'm spending. Now when you start translating that over, I gotta buy a ticket from here to Dallas, or from here to Atlantic City, or here to California, or here to Vegas. Yeah, that's gonna increase too, because fuel costs. I mean, you might be able to get some savers the day of, because they're trying to fill out that aircraft to get us whatever they can, but... Overall, I think it's gonna be hurting out there. And I just happen to you look at this here, and I mean... I don't think I can do it. No, it won't let me click there. Alright. So the next thing everybody always talks about, oh, if the stocks are doing well, so is sports cards. Oops, sorry. I just used Yahoo here just to look at this. And just today, Dow's up $303. And I was, let me click on this. I think it brings the chart up. All right. So five day, looks like it's been pretty consistent. I mean, there's been a little bit ups and downs. But when you look back here on day five, you were at 3279 and here we are at 36. That's uh, what about 2,000 difference, roughly. Then I started just playing around with it, looking monthly. Yeah, we had some ups, downs. It's just the way the, mar the stock market goes. I don't really follow it that much anymore. So this is what I was looking at, the five-year thing. So here's where pre-COVID, this is where I started telework in March of 2020. Stock market was at 21.9 during that time frame. Some of the high points we look at 36. That, that's a lot of big increase through time through December 2021. That looks like to be the peak. Then we start tapering down. I don't know. I mean, as things go down, I understand everything else is going to go down. People aren't going to want to spend as much. Could that be a reason behind part of it? I think it's a small percentage, just like gas prices and everything else. I don't think you could pinpoint... The card prices going down to just one piece. I think there's a lot to it, including the overpopulation, the supply demand that's out there onto this stuff. To we got way too much of this stuff. We some people call it junk era 2.0. Um, there's so much plentiful stuff out there, and these card companies tried to cash in with you know. Originally, we had what like about five, six colors of rainbow, and maybe a. Uh, tiger stripe and then we went to zebra stripes to every color of the zebra that you could throw a skittle at and stuff out there i mean it's crazy and they overpopulated this stuff i mean when they started putting certain stuff into retail it was hobby only like kabooms and downtowns whoa you know overpopulated all right last thing i wanted to look at and this was really interesting on the whole thing people will always say that sports cards and crypto follows side by side. All right. Boom. Now, I did this on the five year, of course. So, 2020, we're looking at crypto. This is just Bitcoin itself. Was it 8,000 or right in here? And we look, started creeping up 11,000. 2021, you know, we start. we had a big, huge increase up into the, I don't remember, it was somewhere there, it was 60, 64. Today, 22578 looks like it's at. Uh, I know there was something about it was down yesterday, a few points or something like that there. But if you look for where we started pre-COVID, there's still a big increase onto it. The smart people gradually cashed out as it was going up to that peak point. And then, you know, maybe they're rebuying into it now. Instead of, you know, selling that one Bitcoin for 64, they're buying three Bitcoin for the price that they sold one for. It's all strategy out there. 
I don't think we can really go off of this solely as we do with sports cards, but it's always a factor that everybody talks about onto it, so I figured I'd look into it. And if you really point this kind of chart up here to, like, if you guys have access to the VCP or even, I guess, Card Ladder or the famous market movers, if you could go back five years and look at the price of sports cards and look at individual cards, and I'm talking like, we'll say 2014 and back, roughly, I'm thinking, you'll see the prices have gone up. And they went sky stupid crazy. Now they're sinking down to where they should be. But ultimately, will they be higher than the prices of pre-COVID? I do believe so. But we've also had, like I said, pay increases and everything else since then. So it would only make economic sense to me they'd be worth more by now. Should they be worth two or three fold still by then? I'd be shocked. But some of the stuff will hold. Some of it will continue dipping. It's all going to depend on to it. All right, I think that was my last one. I think it is. Yep, last one on to it. So a lot of people have been hitting me up like, what have you been up to? You know, what are you doing? You're selling at shows. I am. I'm selling just like I was during the initial hype again. I'm moving a lot of stuff that I just figure in probably six months to a year, I could get back at a third of the price if I really wanted the card. Um, some of the stuff that I'm buying, I have no problem holding for 5, 10, 15, 20 years too. It all depends on to it. it. It's time really to get out of the flipping mentality and into the hobby mentality. Collect what you like, buy what you like. If you want to sell it and you make a profit, you know, good stuff. If you see a good deal out there and you buy it to trade for a card for that you like, you know, it's good stuff. We never called that flipping back in the day. But... That's all the new terminology it's thrown around loosely anymore out there. But alright guys, let me know what you think. Um, you know, with the whole news thing, it's all they talk about is recession, COVID, and all the other craziness out there. Gas prices and stuff. I don't see that really hindering, in my own opinion, of what's going on out there. I think there's plenty of other heavier aspects that weigh into why prices are down that I've talked about now for the past year, year and a half about, you know, the high PSA 10 counts, the overall productions of cards, just because we look at one grading company, we got to look at three of them, uh, BGS and SGC. I'd probably say a small percentage have probably been regraded a few times back and forth to get either a better grade or crossed over, but it's time to really start digging in and looking at this stuff. And, you know, just not with me talking about it, but by everybody's comments on there, people can start reading each other's thoughts, their opinions, and gather their own information to their own conclusion to it all. And, you know, hopefully make the right decisions going down the road with what's going on with uh, Fanatics and the whole hobby, to the hobby box prices being huge, to the possible word recession, inflation, and everything else out there that's going on. You know, what do you? What are your plans um, with it all? I mean, I sold a lot high, and I learned that from my old stock market days and stuff like that. You sell gradually until you get out, and hopefully it's the highest point. If not, you wait, then you rebuy. Later on, it could be two, three, four years down the road. Stuff like that there. But I've held a lot of my stuff through time, too. I still have cards that I've owned since... 88, probably. I want to say 88, maybe even some from 87 and 86 when I was just starting to get into it, too. I'm trying to think offhand. There's plenty of big cards that I've held for, oh gosh almost 30 years now i'd probably say 25 at least 25 years right now so i just like to see what everybody else's thoughts are with this going on with all the craziness you guys see on videos coming across the boards out there to your knowledge you know what you're seeing in your area to you know a lot of us experienced the 90s stuff the 2000 stuff the 2010 stuff where Stuff went up and down and shifted every which way. Then all of a sudden this big huge boom across the board everywhere out there. So, always curious to see what everybody else is seeing. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Take care. Have a good one.
and I'll catch you guys next video.